this is a very interesting scripture so in this kingdom we gain by losing and that every time you attempt to keep you will surely lose whosoever will lose his life he will gain it and so so ever will save it and keep it the first question is what is your life made of your life is made of many things your life is made of your time your life is made of your resources your life is made of your sacrifices and he says that if out of fear you keep those things that constitute your life you will lose it but that in losing it for my sake and for my kingdom you will gain it the price for all of god is all of you the price for unusual dimensions of power more than fasting you've heard me say it more than praying more than night vigils more than prayer conferences the real price for the grace of god is a heart that is completely surrendered it's a realm in the spirit called galatians 2 20 i have been crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ that lives in me and the life that i now live in the flesh that is the body i live by the faith of the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me hallelujah the last enemy the bible declares that shall be destroyed is death and the highest fear of men in this realm is death men will do anything to preserve their lives is that true when an armed robber points a gun at you suddenly your money does not become important again you can tell him take the money take everything but please preserve my life that means a man who is dead no longer fears because the highest thing that can happen has happened to him already are we together Matthew chapter 10 Matthew chapter 10 from verse 28 Matthew chapter 10 from verse 28 it says and fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell uh-huh 29 and are two sparrows not sold for a farthing and one of them shall not fall to the ground without your father verse 30 it says but the hairs of your head are numbered i hope i'm on the right scripture find for me that scripture let's go to jeremiah 29 13 and 14 but find for me the scripture that says we have left all to follow you the apostle said but let's look at this one while we look for that and ye shall seek me this is one of the most powerful revelations about this encounter you shall seek me and only find me when you search for me with how many all your heart your entire being must pant for me you will seek for me with your reputation you will seek for me with your intelligence your knowledge and everything that means if you claim to seek god and you do not find him there is something still alive in you the bible says isaiah chapter 6 i believe verse 1 in the year that king uzziah died something must die for you to see in the year that king uzziah died i saw in the year that my pride died i saw in the year that my ego died i saw in the year that my agenda died i saw please keep that scripture there we'll go back to matthew 19 but please let's go back to isaiah 6. in the year that my ambition died i saw there is a price to see the lord the price is that that king must die whatever is lord of your life is your own Uzziah if you do not sustain the ability to let it die you will not see the Lord hallelujah the motif of a man's heart must be purged must be vetted for you to do business with God in this kingdom 
again I repeat the price for all of God is all of you not your offering not your money the price for all of God is all of you this is one of the fundamental laws that God taught me that if you are able to die to self die to your ambition to die does not mean to not focus on them to die means to demote them until Jesus becomes enthroned are we together now God does not intend to take these things out of your life what I'm teaching you is what you bring them remember in Genesis chapter 28 Jacob made a very big mistake he had an encounter with God and yet he had so many things in his heart he could not benefit from that encounter even though he was at the gate of heaven but then he suffered for many years in the house of Laban by the time we get to chapter 32 here's what the Bible says that Jacob dismissed his wives go Jacob dismissed his cattle go when he was alone that's the price when he was alone it didn't mean he was irresponsible they were still his own but he said go go away when he was alone then a man came and he fought him and he began to wrestle with him and he said bless me and he said you are breaking the law I want to bless you but you are complete in yourself the only way to bless you is I must empty you and he touched the whole of his thigh so that he becomes incomplete without God the moment you are complete without God you do not need him again he becomes the completer of your destiny he touched his thigh your stability now depends on his assistance you never can be stable without him again and he called it a blessing that is how I bless people I bless people by destabilizing them without me I bless people by creating a system around their life where I become the completer of their lives hmm. and then the Bible says he said what is your name Jacob a cheat a supplanter he says thou shall no longer be called Jacob but Israel for as a prince you have power with God and with men and you have prevailed and the Bible says he blessed him and the sun arose and he called that place Peniel the face of God I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved the law of complete surrender ask anyone who is mightily used by God today they will tell you they did not start their journey looking for ministry please listen carefully they didn't start their journey looking for fame or for power it was a blind pursuit for spiritual things God it is either all of you or nothing else that's how they encountered power that's how they encountered grace it was said of Apostle Babalola he was strolling in the wilderness and suddenly fire from heaven responding to his hunger it was not his plan to be some great apostle but there are many people from the beginning of the work you already have p and protocol and you are planning how your fame will go around sorry this is not how god does business with men don't just pray for a man's anointing pray for his hunger pray for his sacrifice pray for the administration of death that happened Power does not just come. God is not a herbalist. You don't just speak and things happen just because you are a Christian. There is a track record. There is blood dripping upon the altar. Listen. You want to lift your voice and things begin to happen? It's more than an impartation. Now, the grave where death ends is also where resurrection starts if you want to resurrect you will still have to enter the grave you can't be resurrected when you are outside the grave the condition for resurrection is you must be inside the grave now i'm not a medical doctor and forgive me if i say something that is wrong i'm asking for forgiveness now in advance but i hear that there are certain drugs if you don't have that sickness and you take them they have a way of it's like they almost make you have that sickness before they treat it so if you say Lord I want to be alive in you and you are alive the first assignment of the grace that comes upon you is to kill you 
by the time you die to yourself kill you does not mean finish your life kill you means dethrone everything until you are left alone this is what men fear because we want something we can find security in i i want to do ministry but let my certificate be there in case it fails i want to love god but let something be there i know that god wants to lift him but uncle be there in case i need you and god says you are not ready for me the law of complete surrender we have a generation whose faith is auxiliary faith it's not pure faith it's not total dependence on god surrender there is nothing in my life today nothing in my life today that i cannot give to god oh if i'm lying may he forgive me but there is nothing in my life koinonia will close down if god says this is the last service it will close down never to open again forever reputation nonsense no never leave where fame met you never leave where lifting met you if it met you on your knees remain there even when you rise don't let men clap you into your doom and destruction David was dancing before the Lord undignified and his foolish wife Saul's daughter said why are you falling your hand paraphrasing why are, do you not know you are now royalty you are still behaving as if you are a shepherd and he said I'm dancing before the God who took the kingdom from your father and gave to me so that he will not take it from me and give another listen to me when you die to yourself all of these mundane things i am apostle you just called me joshua very very long time hallelujah how am i supposed to behave fly i was nowhere when he found me oh i was nowhere when he found me oh thank God for your presence but I will remain where you met me I will remain where you had my teachings I will remain where you saw the miracles hold on to the four horns of the earth don't be embarrassed about your death let everybody who comes let them fly from London from US and meet you still at the place of death you may be inside a jeep but still be dead <laughs> You may be inside a five-star hotel, but still be dead. The pressure from your company is about to eat you up because it is still your own. You see, owners take responsibility. Stewards only maintain while owners take responsibility. When you own things in this kingdom, you are responsible for keeping it. Are we blessed? You're a minister of the gospel here. Please listen. If your desire is to be a superstar, to shine, another apostle, <laughs> let me advise you very early. In the name of Jesus and in the name of honesty, return back to the secret place and flog it out this night with destiny. The secret to fame is to forget about it. Focus on his presence focus on his presence don't be ashamed to let men know he took you from nothing it's not weakness it's not it, it, you are not insulting yourself no are we blessed i marvel at the wonder walking power of god literally every day i see the mighty things that god is doing in and through the lives of people i am humbled and broken Sometimes I look at myself and I said, oh dear, oh dear, what God can do with people who die. Death is the price for life. Death is the price for life. This is the first, you want to be great in this kingdom. You want to last, you want to be exalted. 
I am telling you, go back and flog it with God. Enter a covenant with God and say, no matter how great you lift me, I will lift you while people are lifting me. You must be the highest. It will never be about me. Thank God for the applauds. Thank God for the good speaking. Thank God for all of the great things God is doing around the world. But in the name of Jesus, as an individual and as a ministry, may we never get to a point where we push Jesus out. And we're just holding church, but Jesus is not there. We're doing ministry, but he's not there. He remains the epicenter, the focal point of all that we do. Let Joshua Selman go. If Jesus remains, we're still intact. Let fame go. If Jesus remains, we're still intact. But let everything remain. If Jesus goes, we're in trouble. Is someone learning now? Yes. I show you why you are not seeing spiritual power. Why certain levels of grace. I know you are fasting for 10 days. You are fasting for 50 days. But already competitive jealousy is the motivation for the fast. You are still alive. You will not find power that way. You want to just speak? May your life change. And people's lives change? It doesn't happen like that. God is not a herbalist. He's not a magician. There are mysteries in this kingdom this is why men wonder when god continues to lift us and then they wonder is it that you don't like fame you are doing as if you are not enjoying this thing my one desire is that you be praised that you be praised that you be praised my one desire is that you be praised that you be praised listen let me tell you you have not seen prosperity till you die you have not seen lifting till you die when you really die, you will lay up gold as dust. You will not know what to do with it. All this clamor people are looking for. Believe me, see, I tell you this. I don't mean to insult your pedigree. There are very successful and great people here. But I submit to you in the name of Jesus and in the name of honesty. I have tasted of honor. I have tasted of lifting. I have stood before kings. The person talking to you is not an ignorant person. I count it but dung. For the excellency of his presence when you die to yourself god will take somebody's prayer request and give you as a gift what people are chasing after now forever be chasing after you I'll be chasing after you And now forever be chasing after you I'll be chasing after you One more time I'll forever be chasing after you I'll be chasing after you. You see, I've had the privilege and honor of meeting extremely successful people. Some of them seated here respectfully. And you know the character of exceptional people by the level of humility in their lives. You will almost always confuse them. It is those who don't have anything that make a lot of noise and misbehave. You will see someone who owns estates, owns all kinds of things. And yet, a humility almost to a fault. I remember many, many years ago in this city, very interesting story. A dear man I respect so much, he took me somewhere to go and bab. That was the first time in my life I was going to be paying that kind of money or it to be paid on my behalf for babbing. 
I wanted to say, what is it about the babbing? I mean, give me the clipper. I can bab. How many? What is on my head? For that kind of amount. I won't tell you how much. Ah, boys, an amount you must fear God to forget about it. <laughs> For a haircut? very wonderful executive place and I saw a woman who was moving around trying to find out she would see pieces of paper papers and pick it on the ground and do a lot of things I was almost saying what a diligent staff and someone tapped me and said don't say that that's the owner of the place I said uh-huh that's how you know you can see someone who owns a mega restaurant chains of restaurants all across the continent oh you don't have this there's no water just a moment and they will run and bring it because they are focused on impact not a name you have a choice focus on your reputation or focus on genuine results genuine kingdom results Please lay your hand on your head and pray and cry in one minute. Father, take away everything that makes me alive in the flesh. Let there be that spiritual circumcision. In the name of Jesus, you watching online, make sure you are following. Pray. I want to engage this law in my life. Absolute surrender. Prune my motive. Prune my motivation. Prune my motive. Prune my motivation. All I desire is Jesus revealed. All I desire is Jesus glorified. In my promotion, Jesus revealed. Jesus glorified. In my being anointed, Jesus revealed. Jesus glorified. In my being famous, Jesus revealed. Jesus glorified. Shalakatu siyakata. Enter a covenant with God. Lord, as you lift me, you are lifted in my life. As you raise me, you are raised in my life. As you promote me, you are promoted in my life. I have no agenda to make a name for myself. My pursuit is not for self-aggrandizement. It is for your kingdom. hallelujah I submit to you in the name of Jesus sincerely this is my one agenda at the back of everything that I do at the back of everything that I seek is you that I see is you that I see At the center of it all It's you that I see It's you that I see That must become your desire Why are you looking for that job? Why are you seeking to be a billionaire? There's nothing wrong with those things in themselves God is not interested in those things He wants to know what is the motive Even those who practice occultism, these native doctors and these sorcerers who ask them, you want money? I can give you money. But the condition is that there has to be an allegiance. That's what they want. Satan came to Jesus, your Jesus, and said, I will give you everything. Just bow to me. That's what I want. I don't want the money. What does Satan do with money? Listen to me. Dear people of God, there are levels of liftings. There are levels of influence. There are levels of honor we are yet to tap into. The way up is to go down. That's how Jesus taught us. The Bible says, he that ascended, he first descended. Are we blessed? This is a principle I've learned. One of the mysteries that the Lord gave to me. One time the Lord spoke to me and he said, Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. And I vowed that for the rest of my life, I will let Jesus be revealed in my life. 
He's the mystery behind the results that you see in this ministry. He came to Nicodemus by night and says, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God, for no man can do these things. These results, you see, it is not within the power of a man to do it. I know that sometimes we men of God, we like to take the glory and to shine and make it look as if it's our intellect is a lie. This is the Lord's doing. That is why it is marvelous in our sight. Men cannot go that far in their strength. So for your business, forget about the issue of business now. Forget about the issue of fame. Forget about the issue of lifting. Just focus on him and say, Lord, purify my heart sincerely. I confess that somewhere along the lines of my pursuit, I've been motivated by other things. Don't feel guilty. This is why you are in the house of God. I saw that man buy a jeep. And something within me said, you are not a failure. He was your classmate. Make sure you get it too. I saw my contemporary ministry demonstrating superior dimensions of power. And then I went to fast and said, Lord, don't embarrass me. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified. If we stop here tonight, you go back with this understanding and pray. And God will tell you this. For some of you, this is the one. It's not the devil limiting your rising. It's that God knows if you rise without hearing this message, you will be a disaster first to yourself. Because no eye has seen, no ear has heard. Let me tell you, if it's money you are looking for, the God in heaven can daze you. In a way that you will sit down and look at money and not know what to do with it. Believe me. As I'm saying it now, some of you are saying, Ah, God, you will not give you, you will not answer that prayer until that circumcision happens. Yes, sir. Hmm. That God can make any demand in your life, and your answer is, Yes, sir. Give me the car, it was yours from the beginning. Give me the house, it was yours from the beginning. Give me the ministry, it was yours. Give me the reputation, I'm only representing your reputation. The reason why you can trust the bank with your money is because of ease of withdrawal. When you go to withdraw, there's no stories. God is only able to trust you to the degree to which he can have it back without complaint. Can he give you greatness and fame and make demand? Abraham, take now thy son, thy only son whom thou lovest. After 25 years of mockery. Let me tell you this. Honestly, if it is God you want to do business with, no matter how you pray and fast, the litmus test of death must happen to you. Must. It's a non-negotiable condition. If it is greatness in this kingdom you seek, there will be a demand something that is so alive in your life must die one day take isaac offer him as a bond offering i'm not talking money here and abraham rose up early do you know what that meant to abraham's family life what was he going to tell his wife what were the newspapers imagine as a journalist interpret what happened in our contemporary world today a very notable prophet of god sacrifices his son that's the caption one million likes one million shares madman commentaries will come from several places the next one month will be the stories of people Yet Abraham said, I'm willing to risk my reputation that far. Romans chapter 4 tells us his contemplations. Even though he was crying, 
His plan was to kill Isaac and beg God to bring him back to life. You read it, it's in Romans chapter 4. Do you know how oil, oil that we use for the anointing, I hope you know it comes out of olive. And it does not just, you don't just pluck olive and then oil comes out of it. Find out how oil is made. You have to crush the olive. You pass it through a threshing floor or some kind of crushing system. And while you look at that olive being crushed, you don't even pity it because of the pain. You know the end product. And out of that crushing oil, you want the anointing to heal the sick genuinely, not fake miracles. You want the anointing to prophesy. You want superior grace. It won't just come by dropping an offering and hands laid on you. No, sir. There are wells in this kingdom that must be dug through hunger, through sacrifice, and through death. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yahweh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very quickly, let's make progress. Mystery number two. Shilama subrahaska dibala katusiata. I won't dwell so much here because we've dealt with it. The second mystery that controls results in this kingdom is called the law of the mind, the law of mental transformation. The law of of mental transformation very powerful spiritual law your life will always be a reflection of your mindset the recommendation that is applicable to us it says go and borrow vessels you don't need to borrow oil but borrow vessels borrow not a few and the Bible says she gathered vessels and then he said you now shut the door and begin to empty it and then when she emptied it what happened the moment the vessels were expanding the oil started expanding and the bible says and when there was no more vessel the oil stopped flowing i want to lift you but your mindset is too small for your prayer request if I really answer that prayer, you don't have the capacity. You see, every time people receive more than what their mindset and their hands can hold, they waste it and they abuse it. The miracle of multiplying five loaf and two fish taught us a lesson. These guys were hungry. And when multiplication started happening without management, multiplication without management led to wastage. And they all left. And Jesus said, oh dear, mankind, here is the lesson go and gather the crumbs so there were baskets to put that crumbs in and when they gathered it it was 12 baskets full of wastage if you pour water in a cup it is only the size of the cup you you see that now the size of the cup water will be filled just to that level and every other thing will be a waste so god wants to lift you but in your mind your mind cannot hold more than certain levels of leadership, more than certain levels of expansion. You may be a pastor and you are saying, Lord, I need you to bless me with members. And he says they are all over. There are over 7.2 billion people on earth. I can bring as many. But do you have the enlightenment and the transformation to manage what you are praying for? That's why the Bible says God answers what we ask or think your mind is a prayer warrior too when your mouth stops praying your mind continues that prayer so when your mouth is saying lord lift me your mindset says lord forget about that lifting i am not ready for it yet both your mouth and your mind are prayer warriors now you see most times in church we don't teach this 
because it doesn't seem to look very spiritual so we downplay it and we say you just continue to pray and we have people who continue to pray they study scripture and yet they never rise to notable points of influence they are not represented in anything superior i made a vow and a covenant with god that i would never raise a people who are just spiritually accurate spiritually alive I believe in influence and influence happens through transformed mindsets through renewal of the mind are we together now the Bible says they limited God Psalm 78 I believe verse 41 that they limited the Holy One in the wilderness as mighty as God is men can limit him they limited the Holy One could it be that your business can expand more than you have seen could it be that your ministry can expand? You know, I, I told you at the inaugural service of Koinonia, when the Lord spoke to me about coming to Abuja and all of that, I looked at it and I said, well, Lord, that's all right. And he made me to buy the map of Abuja, the map of Nigeria, the map of Africa, and the map of the world. Till today, they are on my table. I think something like that. And I looked at Abuja in the map and it became very small just six local governments i said i'm well able it became small not small to demean it but i said there is nothing complicated about doing ministry i said it sincerely it would have sounded like arrogance but my mind was receiving it hmm. i believe in the power of a transformed mind your mind is the authorized usher that leads your body to your tomorrow anywhere your mind has not entered the gate will not be open for your body to enter you don't have to fake any living no there's no point faking it your mind does not need a visa to travel with the spirit your mind does not need visa stamped on any passport it can travel while your body is still where it is and go and verify that that tomorrow is there it will come back and usher your body to that realm It's true. The mind of Christ. Superior belief systems. Listen, you have to conquer the spirit of smallness. Not in a competitive way. We already spoke about the law of surrender. But small things. You do a business, you are just thinking of your family members. Very subsistent living. He says, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. God is giving you a vision to have a bank. And you are saying, no, no, it's not for us. Oh dear. If your mind defeats you, you are defeated completely. Completely. The miracle of a transformed mind is a real miracle. You have to be convinced that God is able I can do all things. It's a superior thinking. Fathers like Bishop David Oyedipo will call it a far above mentality. I've been exalted. Don't let people bully you. We live in a society where people can intimidate you. They look at your shoe and say your shoe is cheap, your dress is cheap and they make you feel stupid for going through the law of process. Find strength. Your mind is ahead of your body already someday when your body now wears what your mind is wearing you will see the difference do not be ashamed of your journey tomorrow don't try to fake anything with honor see success is not what you pursue success is what you attract by who you are becoming more than what you do you attract success by growth sustainable success is attracted by growth not just by doing things when you have grown almost anything can prosper in your hand 